So the key for us is to measure that in an accurate way and to provide all teams with facilities to do that. Okay. Now I'm going to hand over to Andy because he's going to show you how we've been looking at this in terms of grassroots football. We also have a, a system that has a little more sense of dashboard that is working, that is used at a professional level, and Andy's going to show you how he's used that data in a real setting with some <coughs> local teams. Hi everyone, uh, can you hear me right? Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, just give you a bit of, of my background because that will lead in nicely to show you these statistics. Uh, started for Charlton, uh, kind of interned there as a strength conditioning coach, went on to Steve Mitchell with the academy, so Charlton's first team. Uh, Steve Mitchell was with the academy, which meant from the under 18s to the under 9s, uh, who also did strength conditioning. Uh, looking at that, that would be one. Uh, <laughs> and then from Steve Mitchell last year, uh, I joined the club Wellington Garden City, who are step five the uh, football pyramid. So not a bad level, part-time players, I'll go into that in a minute. And left there uh, last month as I've now joined uh, Selwick up in Glasgow, so uh, a big difference in temperature. Uh, what I'm going to show you is uh, some one of our players. Uh, it's lucky he's not here because he does seem like big coming a lot. Uh, Okay, so we're going to go to City Football Club, uh, step five of the, the pyramid. They're part time players, so there is a bit of context there as well. Uh, they train arguably twice a week. Uh, so, pre season was a massive thing. Uh, we fully periodised the, the pre season, uh, work with coaches. What we did, if anyone's familiar with periodisation, uh, we made sure that when they came back after some of them three months in Ibiza. Uh, they came back, uh, we worked on general mobility, things like that, to get them back into condition to uh, be ready for, for what was coming. Uh, anyone who, who works in strength condition will probably tell you that some people are very vociferous about the amount of injuries that come in pre-season. Generally, uh, in my experience, it comes from being those players being massively overloaded after three months in Ibiza. Uh, so I've got a, a profile there of Bronx. Let's see if I can get into this. There he is there, he's a fan's favourite, good looking lad. Uh, quite quick, 24, likes a night out, centre forward, uh, scored quite a few goals. Uh, nice lad, I'll give him that, he, uh, he works hard. So, um, he was one of the players we started with. Uh, I'll to slide so we started uh, beginning it on the 21st of July, we, we uh, used it in a pre-season game. So uh, they were coming out of, they would have been in pre-season just about four weeks there, it was their first pre-season game. So if everything went to plan, uh, they should have been at their peak of fitness. So the way we worked it is we overloaded them and then they had a table week before we went into our pre-seasons. Uh, purely for, uh, you know, that's the way we've always done it, but also, but again, we go back to the point that they are part-time players, you know, uh, which had a massive influence in our programming. Uh, especially when it comes to recovery, I won't go into that. Uh, so, uh, the day was collected on the, the tenth game of the season. Uh, they had nine, ones, uh, nine wins, one defeat, uh, and the second set for Bronx because we had five units. We didn't have a squad system. We were trying, and we had five units. So, uh, the second one we took from him would have been the twentieth game, and it was only October. Uh, so they are playing a hell of a lot of games, which meant training sometimes just went out the window. Uh, it was all about getting recovered and playing again. So <coughs> I'll show you, player tech have now got an app which makes it pretty easy to show to uh, players. So this was the original system we used, which was PDFs. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom in up there. What I want you to look at is his stats for distance and sprint distance. Uh, they're, they're new enough. Okay, so centre forward, uh, the average was set around about 85% of their capacities. Uh, we didn't have time to do testing as such uh, because we don't have the means. They don't have the money that you, I would have been used to at other clubs. So we had to get around that 
and set parameters based on what we thought they were capable of. Uh, so it, it's quite a distance for a centre forward to be honest. The other guy is a right back. Uh, so they've done the right, that's the end of pre season. They're, they're pretty fit, they're pretty fit lads. I'll let you look through that. Uh, I'd like to think that I probably did my job well. Uh, as you can see, sprint distance. Again, the right back falls a little bit lower there. Uh, Josh there, you know, he's, he's quite a quick lad. He, he's not, uh, not, not slow. Uh, so we'll just go down again. Top speed again. So, you know, we would be looking at, you know, 10 metres uh, per second would be pretty quick. I think our, our Robin was about 11, 12. So that's context again. Uh, so it's not bad. Sam is obviously a little bit slower. That's down to him. Uh, so this led us to uh, so distance per minute there. So we looked at the stats throughout the season um, with the players we were using, using on in different games. And that led us to come to quite a few conclusions uh, when it came to training. You know, uh, okay, so what were they doing? Uh, how could we make them more effective? Oh, there we go. I've got that on the screen now. So, uh, we looked at training. How could we make them? I don't think being realistic, we're never going to make them quicker. We didn't have access to a gym. Uh, they would only do the progress that they were given, if they did them. Uh, <laughs> so they're never going to get quicker, really, realistically. They're not going to be Usain Bolt. Uh, so we had to look at making them more efficient. So uh, recovery, uh, sprint mechanics, running mechanics, you know, really trying to get them a little bit stronger as such and move better, be more efficient as players. Uh, so this was taken on game 20. This is Josh again. As you can see, Josh has got a little bit slower. Uh, or isn't covering as much distance. Uh, we looked at uh, why this was, why he wasn't performing, why wasn't he scoring. It wasn't just him, it was a collection of players we were looking at, they were losing three games, I wanted to try and save my job, uh, and anyone that works in the game knows that data can be quite handy in that respect. Uh, so if we go into there, we look at the intensity there. Top speed, he's not a slow lad, but he seems to have dropped off. So the argument I had, or sorry, discussion that I had in an academic way with the first team manager was he needs to rest. We need to rest him. Uh, we put across the case, it wasn't just him, it was three or four players that would need a rest to, for performance. We wanted to get them out there playing to the best of their, their capabilities. Uh, he took that board, we sat them down, we used the play tech data, we used the PDFs, we also used by this time the app uh, had come out so we could get it out on our phones and iPads and, and translate that to us. Uh, footballers and not sports scientists, uh, top level lads that I work with, they have a good, you know, you've got people in your ear all the time telling you all kinds of stuff, but they do have a good understanding. They will understand uh, most stuff. Non league players, it's mainly what they read in magazines and on the internet, you know, and then they'll come to you with questions. I spend more time answering questions than actually working. Uh, including phone calls at 4 o'clock in the morning asking me what recovery do you need to take? Uh, and I was Josh. So, <laughs> Uh, so then the, the realities really. Uh, so showing you this data is how we how we utilise uh, player tech in a non-league setting. We were the first ever to use it in the league, uh, which brought a bit of publicity. I think uh, they went on there, but unfortunately now uh, they've gone out of the FA Cup, uh, but they're still doing quite well. They haven't lost a game since Josh was rested. They went on, uh, they brought it back, and they, they they've gone on to win. They've had that little spell. Uh, so for us or for me. The proof there was that we were able to monitor what those players were doing in a non-league setting on quite a simple system. You know, as I said, these guys, the players, the managers, they're all part-time, they all do various different jobs, they work long hours. They don't really understand sports science and performance analysis, of which I'm not a performance analysis. Uh, but they presenting it like this, they could understand that, they could understand why this is the reason you're being dropped. No play hours, I play myself for quite some time. Uh, nobody ever wants to get dropped, but when you have that visual data to be able to interpret to them as something that takes us probably two minutes to cut that down and send to them, it's pretty effective and uh, hopefully they'll go on and do, do quite well for the, the rest of the season. So, thanks for your time.